Oh, a good afternoon, Central Georgia. We did just get our 11 a.m. advisory in on Hurricane Helene. Only a small change as of right now. Actually, two changes to note. One, the winds are sustained of 105 miles an hour now, so that's an uptick from 100 miles an hour that we did have as of the last advisory. And now moving north-northeast at 14 miles an hour. So this is an uptick in speed from 12 miles per hour as of the 8 a.m. update. Still the same central pressure, which is a good sign. We have seen a drop in that pressure about 12 millibars over the past three advisories, so good to not see that continue to drop on down. Let's take it through the projected path right now. As you can see, Thursday 8 p.m. still a little bit to go between Hurricane Helene and land going to have 120 mile an hour sustained winds. That's a category three hurricane. Still the possibility exists for landfall as a category four storm. Now taking it up here into central Georgia. We're not really getting that timestamp right there just to the south of Macon anymore. They do do these timestamps just about 12 hours apart. So you're seeing tropical storm status by the time it reaches north Georgia with winds of 65 miles an hour, but still projecting this to be a category one hurricane as it does move through here in central Georgia. Those are the only two real significant changes with this, but let's go ahead and take a live look at our satellite and radar. And yes, it has been quite a messy morning here in central Georgia. We had our frontal boundary approach yesterday and tropical moisture really colliding with that. And that sprouted some overnight showers and thunderstorms. In fact, even a tornado warning down in our southern corridor in Dodge County, Pulaski County, stretching into Bleckley County. That was very short lived. Though. That's what we mean by these spin up tornadoes. A few things I want to note. Number one, we do have this flash flood warning right now. This is going for Jefferson, Johnson, Lawrence and Washington counties. And obviously that's all that fit on the banner up there in the top left. But this goes into counties like Trutland County and Emanuel County as well. This will go until 145 in the afternoon right now. These areas have definitely received plenty of rainfall and heavy shower after heavy shower. That's why that flash flood warning has been issued. Now taking a look look at this. I'm going to take away the clouds and all of the radar. So you're definitely seeing number one just to the south of Columbia. These two red boxes. This is a tornado warning down in South Carolina and right in the middle of this tornado watch right here. That's what this big red box is. So we have a tornado watch just to the east of us here in central Georgia and then just recently new. We have a tornado watch down here to the south of us encompassing areas like Waycross, Valdosta, Tallahassee and two or two tornado warnings over there just to the southwest of Tallahassee right there where Helene is projected to make landfall maybe a little bit over to the east. So there's a very likely possibility that we do see a tornado watch issued up here in central Georgia as these watches do exist all around us. Now let's pop it over to the watches and warnings. We got to update on this this morning here in central Georgia. So all these counties outlined in that pink that's so that hurricane warning. So hurricane conditions those are winds sustained of about 74 plus miles an hour are expected within the next 36 hours in these counties outlined. So this stretching in counties like Telfair, Dodge, up to Bleckley, Twiggs here in Macon Bibb County, Monroe, Lamar, Thomaston over in Upson County, Crawford County, Taylor County, Peach, Houston, Macon, Dooley, and Chris counties. And this also does exist further down to our south and our southwest. All those areas shaded in the pink, but definitely not in our central Georgia viewing area. And then now taking a look at the tropical storm warning. So what that means is the tropical storm force conditions, just a little bit less than the conditions suitable for hurricane criteria, winds anywhere from 39 to 73 miles per hour. That's going to encompass the rest of here, uh, uh, rest of central Georgia. So Wheeler County, Montgomery County, Trutland, Lawrence, Johnson, up to Washington, Wilkinson, Baldwin, Jones, Jasper, Putnam, and Hancock counties. So I don't want you to get too locked in to these areas. That doesn't mean you're going to specifically see wind gusts that are within that range. Obviously, when I show you the wind gust map, you'll see that some of our models are indicating that we can have wind gusts that are going to be a little bit higher than the winds that I did just mention in those ranges for tropical storm conditions and hurricane force conditions. So let's play it through future view. Our graph model is seemingly been a little bit east over the past, I'd say, 
about 12 hours, maybe getting into about 24 hours. Our cone was going further west, according to the National Hurricane Center, and continuing to see that cone trek right through the middle of central Georgia. So as we go throughout today, we're still looking at those outer bands to bring rounds and rounds of showers and storms all across central Georgia. So here's the 11 a.m. timestamp going into lunchtime, 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, looking like pockets of heavier showers all across central Georgia right there. And like I said, a couple of thunderstorms can be embedded within that. Now taking it on into the evening time here. So it's the Thursday right now this afternoon or evening rather I should say. This is going to be around dinner time, 7 p.m. Yes, still seeing widespread rain all across central Georgia. Not really seeing any breaks whatsoever in that rain until we kind of maybe get into the later hours. But once we get into the evening hours, that's when we're projecting Helene to make landfall. It did look like the latest timestamp, 8 p.m. Somewhere around 9, 10 p.m. is when we can expect landfall from Helene. But I want to note as we go into the 11 p.m. hour tonight our southern counties here in central Georgia starting to see those heavier bands of rain closer to the center of circulation and that's also going to be where the gusty winds are as well. So we take it on into 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Now you're starting to get a good picture of that center of circulation. Definitely those wind arrows swirling on around. And yes, we're definitely seeing heavy showers widespread all across central Georgia, mainly our southern half at the 1 a.m. hour. So this does look to be following a little bit behind schedule of what we have had recently. Now we get on into about the 3 a.m. hour, and this is pretty spot on with what we've had the past couple of runs. Our southern counties seeing that eye wall start to cross into their corridor. So 3 a.m. overnight uh, storm risk right here. This is going to be the gustiest winds. This is going to be the heaviest rainfall bands. As you can see, dark reds, those maroons, maybe even some pink popping on up on the north side of that eye wall. So this is going to continue to trek through the eastern part of central Georgia. As you can see, just east of us here in Macon, and there's all of that swirling right there. Still a pretty definitive eye at the 4 a.m. hour on Friday, seeing some clearing in that cloud cover. And like I said, the heaviest bands of rain and the gustiest winds are going to be present during the overnight hours into early Friday morning. Now we will take it to 5 and 6 a.m. Yes, you can see how fast of a mover this is. Already the center of circulation getting on out of central Georgia just to our north, but still dealing with some heavier wraparound showers around the 6 a.m. hour. And now taking it to 7 and 8 a.m., that's when we really start to see things calm on down. We're still seeing some gusty winds and some cloud cover, but really just left with some light showers in our northernmost counties north of I-16, northeast of I-75. Now taking it on into lunchtime on Friday, Cloud cover starts to begin to clear. The winds will continue to gradually wind on down in terms of their gusts and their speeds. And then getting into Friday evening, it is looking mighty nice, just a little bit breezy. And that's going to set the stage for what we look to have a nice weekend here in central Georgia. So want to note, first of all, the severe weather risk here for today. We have a level one at least for all of our central Georgia counties here. That's going to be that green color you see. So that is going to be the lowest level of severe weather risk that we have here in central Georgia. As many counties to our southeast and our east that could be closer to being on that dirty side of the storm, they are in a level two out of five risk for severe weather. But still, not as confident as the chances that we have further over to the east where I showed you that tornado watch box. Those areas are in a level three out of five. So the areas on that east side, that dirty side, more prone to seeing things like a spin up tornado, but definitely not limited to those areas as we're already seeing our fair share of tornado warnings that are still well north above the eye. So we're going to continue to keep track of that and a good model that we use is this tornado parameter. This is going to be our European model. It gives us a good idea, uh, idea about how unstable the atmosphere is in certain areas. So you're seeing kind of these gray colors pop on up throughout this afternoon, starting to get a little bit brighter as we go into this evening. But it's really once we go into the nighttime hours and overnight, you start to see flashes of red, orange, yellow. That is definitely a more significant tornado parameter than these grays and these very faded whites. And that's going to exist, like I said, in those areas outlined in the level two, but definitely not limited to those areas. Severe weather or weather in general doesn't obey the guidelines or the boundaries necessarily that the SPC does give us. So we're going to continue to monitor that. And it really looks like this has expanded further over into our eastern half here in central Georgia, maybe even popping up some pink in here in our eastern most counties. So yes, definitely some pretty 
significant tornado parameters associated with this. And the good news is as we go throughout the morning hours, we start to get that rain moving out to the north. We're definitely looking at the tornado potential to go on down. Like I said, these spin up tornadoes probably more than likely just going to fill out the length of the warning that they originally issued. We saw one in Dodge County this morning, and that's exactly what it did. We saw a rotation signature and it began to weaken very gradually and it was allowed to expire at the time it was originally set for. In terms of how fast can we expect our wind gusts to be here? Well, you can see nothing really going on wind wise right now. Maybe a gust of up to five, six miles an hour. Yes, definitely nothing significant, especially for when I'm about to show you. So as we go throughout afternoon hours today, closer to where more of those outer bands are and getting closer to the center of circulation, wind gusts get up to about the 20 mile an hour mark. And once again, these are the wind gusts, the occasional gust that blows a little bit faster than the winds are constantly blowing at that sustained speed. And and then into the night right now. So Friday at midnight when those heavier bands are really starting to arrive gusts up to maybe about 48 miles an hour in areas like Vidalia. Don't get too locked into a certain value in a certain place. We're definitely looking at the potential for gusts like this because when I continue to move that center of circulation closer over here, yes, you see maybe even a 93 mile an hour gust down in Vidalia. I think we're really going to see gusts kind of top on out maybe 90 miles an hour tops. Hopefully the potential is still there to crawl on above that 90 mile an hour mark, maybe even close to 100 miles an hour, but I do believe we are forecasted to have sustained winds of about 80 to 85 miles an hour. Maybe a gust up to about 98 miles an hour is looking more probable. So as we see that center of circulation pass to the north of us, you can see it just north of Athens right there. The winds do continue to steadily track on down, but we're still looking at gusts up to about 40 miles an hour as that center of circulation is still well north of us. And then as we go into the afternoon hours, when it's looking completely clear here in central Georgia, yes, we're still seeing some gusty winds up to about 25 miles an hour. This is going to exist into the nighttime as Tropical Storm Helene is a very large storm and has a very large wind field as well. So those winds will persist as we go into the morning hours and even into the afternoon hours on Saturday as well. So now taking a look at rainfall, this is our other impact we're really looking at for the flood risk here in central Georgia. So this is going to take into account all the rain that we are forecasted to see. And now it looks like the values have actually ticked on down according to this latest run, maybe anywhere from about the four to six inch range. So that would be good news, but I still believe five to seven inches, maybe getting closer to eight to nine inches locally is definitely going to be kind of the top end of that range, if you will. So if we follow this suit, that would be good news in terms of of flash flooding here in central Georgia, but still definitely plenty of enough rain to provide for some flash flooding risk all over the area. So in light of that, we have a flood watch all across central Georgia, really all across the entire state of Georgia. So those low lying areas near bodies of water are going to be more susceptible areas that don't really drain well. We've already seen that throughout this morning with some traffic alerts here in central Georgia. Definitely going to want to keep an eye on this as this will go from now all the way until Friday morning when that rain does finally move on out of here. So a weather impact alert is in place for today all the way into the first half of tomorrow. So once that rain really gets on out and those winds start to go down in speed, we can finally get rid of the weather impact alert. But before we get there, really the impacts we're looking at are the gusty winds and the heavy rainfall amounts, but also those possible severe storms and looking more and more probable according to what I did show you on that tornado parameter associated with Helene. What you're going to need is to continue to stay updated with us around the clock as we get these updates. Continue Continuing to get advisories every three hours closer to landfall. We'll start to get these advisories every hour. So staying up to date with us on our 13 WMAZ app, 13 WMAZ.com, 13 WMAZ plus our streaming app is going to go a long way. But obviously with the gusty winds we are expecting and the heavy rainfall amounts making that soil really loose, trees are going to be more prone to being blown over. So we're definitely looking at the risk of widespread power outages all across central Georgia. But also if you're old fashioned, handy dandy weather, weather radio is going to give you all the severe weather warnings that you do need as we continue to deal with the impacts of Helene as we go throughout tonight. So if you haven't already continue to prepare, but hopefully you already have prepared.
prepared secure loose items from those strong winds. Obviously, it's going to be a messy day with those outer bands of rain. And as we go throughout the evening, the winds are definitely going to pick on up. So really try to find a time that you can if you haven't already secure any loose items from those strong winds. When you get strong enough winds like we're seeing those gusts, maybe up to about 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. All of these things act as a projectile and can damage structures being blown around at high speed. So that includes patio furniture, trash cans, outdoor decorations, trampolines, grills and propane tanks. And obviously a couple more items that you may have in your backyard. So really anything you don't want to get blown around that you do have property wise outside, you're definitely going to want to store it or you're going to want to secure it in some fashion. Now taking a look at some other actions that you can do. Obviously the securing the loose items is the big thing, but buying canned food and water and charging all devices that you need now. So if you've already been outside, you've secured your loose items, you've gone out, you've gotten gas, you've gotten food, you've gotten water, something that you still need to do and you can do throughout today is charging your mobile device. Anything that you need to get any specific type of weather alert and also in order to stay updated with us on the 13 WMAZ app if there is to be widespread power outages. Be aware of any alerts and continue to stay updated on any changes to the forecast. Right now, we're not looking at too many changes as at least compared to the past couple of days. We've definitely seen the track and the cone change quite a bit here in central Georgia. The one thing we still remain a little bit uncertain about is which side of the storm we're going to be on. Is it going to be on that dirty side or are we going to be on the calmer side, that west side? So right now, that circulation is actually trending a little bit further east. We have seen areas further west in the cone trimmed on off and starting to follow suit a little bit more with what our graph model does say, our future view graphic that I showed. It is going to be a Category 1 hurricane moving into Central Georgia, which to put in perspective, any kind of tropical system that we've really seen here in Central Georgia, it definitely has been a tropical storm or even weaker by the time it's made its way to us. Obviously, it's moved over a good amount of land, moving at a slower speed. Yeah, those things have been taken into account, but Helene is definitely utilizing the least amount of land possible and taking a straight direct path to Central Georgia. Georgia, but also going to be moving at a very good speed. Nonetheless, Helene is a very large storm with widespread impact. So going back to that, I will show you the cone of uncertainty and I will want to emphasize that this cone shows you all the paths that this center of circulation has the possible taking. So obviously been slimmed down pretty good agreement right now, right here as it does move through central Georgia. This does not include where the impacts are going to be. We're seeing impacts right now currently down in the peninsula of Florida, over in the panhandle of Florida, even up in South Carolina where we saw a tornado warning. So obviously the impacts are going to be spread far and wide all across the southeast. So just because you're not in the direct path of Hurricane Helene doesn't mean you won't feel the impacts. But continue to stay updated with us here at 13 WMAZ as we continue to get more information. For now, I'm going to take it to the comments, see if I can scroll through, answer any questions that a lot of you have had.